Hello, and welcome to Exploring Axon, a podcast where we discuss Axon Framework, Axon Server, and their ecosystem. I am your host and a software developer at Axonic, Sarah Tori. In this episode, I spoke with Andy Whitaker from the state of Indiana. Andy has been working on a new project for the past couple of years and has faced some new challenges in the process. We talked about some of those challenges and why they came about and how he overcame those challenges. I hope you enjoy our conversation and let's have a listen. Hi, Andy. Thank you so much for joining me again. How are you today? I'm doing very well. It's good to be back. Thank you. It's uh, great to have you back. And uh, just for those listeners who have not uh, listened to our uh, first uh, talks, uh, can you tell me a little bit about where you are and uh, what are you doing currently? Maybe I'll start with that. Um, yeah, I'm Andy Whitaker, and uh, I've been a software developer engineer for oh, two decades now. And <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, and and like lately, last few years, I've really gotten into event driven microservices and and Axon and stuff. And I'm, right now, I'm working for the uh, state of Indiana in the United States. Um, working for a uh, Department of Workforce Development, and I'm working on their um, unemployment insurance agency application. Uh, that's where I've been the last awesome. year and a half, two years now. So, Yeah, very good. So um, you and I spoke with um, uh, your partner at the time, Joe, uh, I think now almost two years ago, I think it was, I think right before yeah. you joined this new project. Yep. Yeah. So we had a really great talk about um, what your process was in uh, into coming in uh, to using these patterns like domain-driven design and then um, adapting CQRS and then using Axon Framework in your project and uh, what kind of benefits you saw um, in, in the process. Now, since you've joined this uh, quote-unquote new, because you've been there for a while now, it's yeah. uh, as you mentioned, it's yeah. almost two years. So I understand that certain things have changed and um, this project specifically was not using any of those patterns that you had been using in your previous project, and uh, you have faced some challenges along the way. So let's talk about those a little bit. Can you uh, give everybody a little bit of a background what this is about? And knowing for government projects, things usually go a little bit slower than what you like. So how has that been for you? Yeah. So I worked on the uh, um, the this is the the project is called Uplink and I worked on that mm -hmm. starting in 2006. So it went live okay. in 2014. So I had a lot of old technology. I mean, old now it wasn't old then. Um, and yeah. over the years it's gone through several tech upgrades and stuff. Um, but it's basically kept the same kind of architectural patterns, which don't mm -hmm. hold up very well over time is as, as things mm -hmm. are added to and stuff. So they didn't use domain driven design. They didn't use, at least not at first. Um, and mm -hmm. a couple, a couple of years ago, I mean, right before the pandemic, um, the team there started investigating domain-driven design and event-driven things. Okay. And mm -hmm. but um, on a team, and this was before you joined, right? Right before I joined, came back. Yeah, right before okay. I, came, I, okay. I, I left. I left. Um, I left in around 2015 to work on okay, a project gotcha. I talked about last time for another mm -hmm. uh, yes. agency, and then I came back. Yeah. Um, I came back during the pandemic. And they had they had been working on a domain driven design kind of uh, 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 new approaches to, to new code, mm -hmm. but some of the challenges were you have you have a large larger team there than I was working with before, yeah. and mm -hmm. a lot of different opinions on what exactly domain. Everybody <laughs> yeah. read the book and everybody came up with a different idea, and, and yeah, so there were different um, different ways of going about it. Um, I came in and they, they had asked me to come back because I had success at the other agency and they wanted me to bring back what I had done there, which was part of that was Axon and the event driven microservices. Mm -hmm. And so when I came back in, um, there was a lot of pushback at first from some people about, oh, here's another framework mm -hmm. to use. Why do we need another framework? Yeah. We already have Spring. We have all these other things we're using that don't stick around and stuff. And I did, mm -hmm. I did one project there. Um, um, uh, to, to for for users to upload documents into Uplink, mm -hmm. which they didn't have before, um, and during mm -hmm. the pandemic, it became very apparent that they needed a way to get documents uploaded quicker than prior to yeah, that. Definitely. They were faxing in, mailing them in, scanning them in. So I I, I did one project there um, to upload documents using Axon, and it was a success. Um, right. And then <laughs> that was a good thing. And by doing that, I showed the team 
kind of how fast we're able to turn it around. And, um, and it, it, it kind of helps some of the challenge there. Um, we st still have some pushback, um, on mm -hmm. frameworks and things. And then yeah. I, uh, um, and then I worked with another, um, more recently, uh, just this last summer, I worked on another set of projects to, to generate documents to that gets, that get mailed okay. out. And we okay. had to re <laughs> and the challenge with that one was we were given deadlines before we had, mm -hmm. you know, it's very typical given deadlines, but the deadline was basically our licenses for this other software we're using is running out. Uh, the other software you used, guys do it before. IE, <laughs> The, other, the soft, yeah. other software used IE Internet Explorer, which was being um, turned off supposedly in mm -hmm. June. Yeah, and so we had a, we had a hard deadline of mid June to get everything done. And yeah. by using the event driven stuff, we were able to deliver really fast, real quick iterations. Yeah. Um, able to build a release, build and release, and we we met our deadline. We missed by a week. We we begged and pleaded for them to let us have IE for one more week. That's so nothing. We, we, yeah. Yeah. And, and it went live at the end of June and we went through the summer and then in September, I mean, we still have IE on the computers, so I don't know why that <laughs> deadline. <laughs> just, <laughs> just to give you some kind of pressure, right? Because yeah. you need so, that, because you need more of that at work. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. So, it's interesting. So, so Andy, um, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Uh, just a couple oh. of questions before um, um, we move too far away from the, 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 uh, first part of it where you were uploading documents. Um, so that part that you started and it was uh, um, kind of like a proof of concept for your team that, yeah. hey, this actually, this stuff actually works. So can you tell me a little bit about that? What was the um, main reason why you chose the framework and the event-driven process for uploading documents? Because that's something that um, we don't hear every day that people who want to create an application that uploads or generates documents use event driven maybe it is i don't know but uh, what was the what was the reason why you chose that and additionally how did you sort of measure the success of it how did you find out that it's or, or show maybe your team who was maybe a little bit more skeptical that this actually works and let's give it a try oh so so the reason I, we used it we did the analysis of what we needed to do we needed to provide the, we, we broke down like the flow we um kind of what was happening we we need to we need to be able to, when a certain condition occurs, we, we had to basically give the users the ability to upload a, a document. So the process is they get a notice in the mail. We send them something. We mm -hmm. expect them to fill it out and upload it back. Okay. So the first mm -hmm. event was, hey, we sent them something. So with the, okay, there's an event right. right there. And so, okay, so that could trigger something. And, and, and what we used to trigger that was, say, okay, well, if we, when that goes out, we turn on a, a link on their portal that and that lets them click a link to upload the response back and uh -huh. and, we, and okay. the rules were it's like well they have to respond within a certain period of time so there has to be something there that counting down like once we give them that link they have to be able to respond within i think it's two was two weeks and depending on the form depending on what the rules are mm -hmm. and so you have all these different business yeah. rules you have these different kind of things going on and you have events where okay they need to be given a link to upload it then we when they upload it we have to be able to say hey it's been virus scanned well okay so that's another event there that we've somehow we've got this document uploaded and it's passed it's it's malware checks and then we mm -hmm. have to get it into long-term storage which is um we use um we use the file net right now and so there's yeah. another event right there so there's this this handoff there's we we want it but along the way we always wanted to make the document visible to the user and visible to okay. um the support team in the state. So once it's uploaded, even mm -hmm. if it's, even if it's, um, well, if it's not been scanned yet, we can't show it, but, but we want to keep track of where it's at. And, and until it gets stored in long-term storage, we still wanted it to be available to open it and do things. So, so it, mm -hmm. it lended itself one to, um, the, once we said, Oh, there's some events here. I said, okay, that there's some event stuff we have, and we can, we can say, we can have another, um, service and say, Hey, we have an upload document that's past scans go and we have mm -hmm. another service that says, I need to get this stored into FileNet. And so we could make this mm -hmm. always synchronous and, um, and, and just, uh, uh, just um, triggered by these events. And so that was, mm -hmm. so forget Axon, that was just event flow, event driven stuff. It's yeah. Like, okay, and it makes a lot of sense we're doing this. And so we figured out like an event flow and the commands, um, uh, the commands that would cause these things and the kind of queries we needed. 
And then I, I had my team, let's, let's show how Axon, we could build this pretty fast. We have queries mm -hmm. and, and we used um, Axon server or standard edition. We didn't, cause I, I was still okay. having to prove it before I could yeah. get to buy it. <laughs> get to so, the enterprise. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> Which was going to be so, my last, my next question. Yeah. <laughs> Great. But, but so, so then, so, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's really interesting because um, <laughs> that's one of the things I'm always curious about. What kind of businesses, you know, do you use event driven? Um, architecture and uh, event sourcing in, which is really cool because you uh, get these various use cases and that mm -hmm. I would not have uh, initially thought about using event-driven uh, microservices for, for instance. So kind of going back a little bit further, mm -hmm. uh, when you were thinking about the architecture of the system that you're working in, so you mentioned that this uh, was an older system. It okay. started several years ago and uh, various technologies came and went and it sort of shaped and reshaped itself into yeah. its newer version, right? Yeah. Was it a monolith and did you then decide to uh, sort of go into more of distributed systems or was that um, basically the system that you started using to upload documents, was that the first piece of what then became Micro, I don't know if it's microservices at the moment or it, just it, distributed it was, for that matter. It was, yeah. it was the second one. Um, it was this, the application is okay. monolithic. Um, it's, it's, it's actually several monoliths working together. They have a shared database mm -hmm. and you have basically, mm -hmm. they, they basically communicate via the database. <laughs> so, okay. so one app will update right. record, another app will read records, but, but they're all these big monolithic applications. And so, gotcha. um, um, so as part of this, uh, um, part of going through the pandemic, they started introduce they introduced one microservice for sending emails, mm -hmm. and it wasn't it's not really a um, and it's event driven, um, um, and and but not using Axon or anything like that. But the uh, that was the first one, um, and then I came along right. with um, um, doc the document upload, and we've mm -hmm. we've uh, we've taken some other features of the app and we made them into microservices already. Not they're not event driven. Mm, okay. They're more like they're more like things to go to integrate with other systems. We've pulled out mm -hmm, their code mm -hmm. from the monolith. And we've kind of made um, smaller microservices to do a kind of integration points. So that, so it's gotcha. been going on now for maybe a year, year and a half now. We've done mm -hmm. we've done a handful. Um, yeah, I'm more I'm most excited about the event driven ones, but but, <laughs> right. but they're but they're um but we're but the monolith is we uh, is, we have a lot of technical debt. And trying yeah, to yeah. break it down, and the team, um, um, it's slow because we have to keep the lights on. So there's a lot of things yeah, that have to come. We have to get changes coming in. It's a government thing, so the laws change. There's there's always mm -hmm. there's always um, other factors involved. Um, so we have to keep the lights on, so we don't make as much progress as sometimes I like to make. You know, but yeah. but it is progress. Um, so and and um, um, we are definitely getting. Um, more credibility because we have a new CIO and his one thing was, he's we need to be able to deploy in the middle of the day. We need to be able to get this stuff out there yeah. as soon as we can. And, and we can already, with the microservices, we can do that. We have zero downtime. And, and it's deploy. great because it's like, you you just read my mind because my next question was going to be, <laughs> what was the reasoning behind going into microservices? Was it just because um, you wanted to make deployment easier? You wanted to have yeah. a faster delivery basically. Yeah, absolutely. That's what you wanted because, to have. Yeah. Yeah. Because right now all the apps, because they share the same database, they share a lot of common code base, they all get deployed mm -hmm. at the same time. So a deployment gotcha. usually takes two or three hours and everything, even mm -hmm. though if you just change one of the apps or two of the apps change, you, we, you, you get gun shy and you deploy everything because right. it's just, that's, you know, it has to all go together. So we talked about the challenges um, at the beginning and one of it was that um, things don't go as quickly as, uh, you would like them to because of right. government requirements and changes and things like that. Um, but you also mentioned that there was some uh, skepticism within mm -hmm. the within the group yes. and within the team, uh, even though there were um, talks and research about uh, some of these patterns like domain yeah. driven design and CQRS and things like that. Can you tell me a little bit more about these challenges and what was the... Um, Maybe what was the biggest one that folks were concerned about within your team? One, the, I think the biggest one was just having to learn something new. Um, and mm -hmm. they were already, it, it's, it's, um, 
was just learning something. The, the, doc, the team I worked on with Doc and Upload, their their big thing was having learned something new. They were worried. There, it already takes everything's deployed in WebSphere. They, oh, and now we got to run something else alongside WebSphere, and it's just going to slow us down. And and then you have um, um, we have these events and these commands and trying to figure out. You know, they were, the, the event sourcing was a big hurdle. I think they were worried about that, and then then and then integrating with the old system. There was, there was a lot of worries. Um, the biggest one has, was always, it, is it, it's just another something to learn. And it's, it's so hard. just it's hard one more thing. One more yeah. thing to learn. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and there's no, no real blueprint on how to do it. So, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we just, we, we just, we made our own blueprint and I took, and this is how yeah. we do it. And we can always change it. And that's the whole nice thing about sense. it is that what, what sold, what really sold things, uh, what with the teams, both teams that I both type, both projects I worked on, what's what got rid of the skepticism was when I showed them, you know, we could start up in your local environment and start one of these microservices up in twelve seconds versus mm-hmm. three minutes, <laughs> two <laughs> hours, <laughs> and <laughs> right. and you can make a change and it's and the annotations make sense and it's just some annotations and it's and and, it's, and the test cases when I, I made them do unit tests. And yeah, that, that I, I I think it's, it's kind of under I don't know the axon if, if axonic sells it or not, but but that test framework to teach people how yeah. it works, working works is a gym mm-hmm. because that's what I did. We 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 wrote we wrote unit tests together and we were using debugging logging and stuff like that to show how it worked. Mm-hmm. And once they yeah. got over that fear and they were just writing unit tests and writing things along and doing mm-hmm. just doing a little bit at a time and able to run it in their local and stop and start it and it was yeah. and, and, it, and they were running like axon locally in their computer and didn't have a shared database mm-hmm. they were just able to kill it delete it and start again it, it that got rid of the fear that was the that nice. was the big thing and and that was the whole thing and um, the the then the rest then we basically i um we all kind of like drew short straws about who had to do the integration with the upload so that was the hard part <laughs> gotta say the unit test part is not is not a big deal when i first came across the the framework and you know of course yeah. there's a learning curve you have to learn about the annotation what they do and whatnot but yeah, yeah the the testing actually is um not that big of a deal you right. you just you write the unit test and my favorite is when you see all the check screen and it's like yay yeah. the day is great but the uh, the integration tests a yeah. whole different issue they still give me I don't know the hippie jibs every time somebody says yeah. integration. It's like, <laughs> yeah. especially in these distributed systems, right? Because you have to right. integrate with various various yeah. parts, and uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. I, I understand. So you mentioned also about um, event sourcing was hard to sell. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that and what was the the fear or the skepticism it, there? It was just. Um, the idea, the fear was, how do you know your current state? Right. That was their, mm-hmm. that was the thing was, was, um, they didn't understand, well, why do I have to have all these different events to play back to get to my current state? And I, I said, well, in reality, mm-hmm. it doesn't take, you know, you have a snap, I explain snapshots and stuff, but, and then I explained projections, you know, it, your database is just a projection of what the real state is. And mm-hmm. it was, it mostly, it's just, um, it's just, it's not so much, um, it's not such a hard concept. It just seems like a hard concept. It, it event sourcing mm-hmm. just seems like, and one, you know, the best way we explained was, uh, um, was the, uh, you know, it's just like a ledger in your, your checkbook, even though I'm old and I have a ledger and I still keep a checkbook. Most of these guys don't <laughs> have a ledger, but you're not but old. So you look, I have a ledger too. <laughs> <laughs> you look at your bank account, you see every entry is an event, you know, and that, that's an easy concept to get and you can't change them and you always add up to get the same value. And your mm-hmm. final balance is your snapshot. You know, that, that, those are, I mean, once you get past that. I like that. Your final balance is your snapshot. I really like that. I'm going to steal that from you. Thank you. <laughs> well, it, yeah. So, and, 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 the, and they've got, um, but that was, uh, um, that helped sell it. And, but the biggest, the biggest challenge on the event sourcing was that. And, and basically, um, I can't change the events and said, so, no, you can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and the good thing was they had already done before I came back, they'd already been, they started using events for, um, for just for, not for event driven stuff, just to capture certain audit trails, just audit events yeah. in their database. Mm-hmm. And so they were kind of familiar with that, but they weren't familiar with building state back up from that. 
And mm, so, gotcha. so it was, and, and, and when the selling points was, you know, I, well, when I go with document, this new stuff we're doing, they're saying, how many events do you have now? I said, well, as, and I said, as of today, we have like 11 million events in our system. And that's not, <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's a huge number, but no. it, it's like, oh, you have significant enough though. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah. but you have to build your state up from all that stuff. I said, well, no, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work that way, but it, it's not that hard. It doesn't, it's fast. Yeah. And, and then yeah. I explained the projections and stuff, but the, um, but the, uh, uh, I lost my train of thought there, but the, uh, um, but the, we recently had a, a few weeks ago, we had a security breach and, mm. um, it's the first one that I'm aware of we've had. Mm-hmm. And I was on the team to help figure out what was wrong and how, we, and we plugged it. We plugged it within minutes once, once we knew about it, but they, we helped track it down by using those audit events. We found out who nice. was involved and who was impacted by using yeah. the audit events, but with these weird mm-hmm. logins we had in, in, in the business after that, we did the announcement. Well, those audit events helped us. We said, we need more events. We need more events. Like, yes, <laughs> yes, we do. Need more You're events. like, now we're Absolutely. on board. Yes. Absolutely. We need more events. <laughs> That's what I've been talking about for the past two years. <laughs> So, and, and, and one of the managers in the, in the meeting I had, it was like, Andy, the, this Axon stuff you're working on, doesn't that just work on events? So yeah, we just have to pick the events we want to keep, you know, figure them mm-hmm. out and we can store metadata on the events. So we know who's doing what. And, and so I've been through several mm-hmm. demos showing that even with document upload, I can show it, go through the whole system and, and where it made it through and who did the uploads and when it actually passed scans and, you know, no one really cares about that kind of stuff so much, but the, the concepts are, it's there, you know, we have it. Yeah. We need to do something with exactly. it. We, you know, so, which is really powerful, which is really great. So when you first started using Axon server and you started with the standard edition, just to, mm-hmm. um, show it to the team and, um, kind of let them play around with it and see that it actually works before, uh, committing to the enterprise right. edition. Now, once you moved to the enterprise edition, what were some of the values that you saw within the project? What was the the thing that you felt, ah, this is easier now and kind of had an aha moment maybe or ha, ah, great moment. <laughs> well, I, the, the, or maybe the, both. <laughs> the the um the the dashboard I mean, we got the enterprise edition and we see the dashboard. We have multiple, mm-hmm. we get to see multiple um, contexts. And so now we got two contexts we're using. And the team, um, what we discovered is that, you know, the, uh, the, the tracking processor stuff that's mm-hmm. in there, being able to watch our system go, just giving some observability on, like, we can see our throughput. We were able, when we started doing the document upload and stuff, we don't have that much going on in there, but, um, but we were able to see, you know, kind of like, oh, you know, I can tweak this thread here. Tick, 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 tick. Okay, okay. Now I'm processing these faster. Oh yeah, that was easy. You know, and then the new project we just finished, the one, the doc, the the uh, notice generation is much beefier, and we're running. Mm-hmm. Um, and it took us a while to get it balanced the way we like it because it has to integrate with a couple of different systems. And right. that dashboard helped us see, oh, okay, this this one's not processing events very fast. It's, it's lagging. Okay, let's do this and let's do some tweaks and and that just that that dashboard, especially the tracking mm-hmm. where it showed us the tracking processors, yeah. was brilliant. Uh, we, we nice that really helped <laughs> a lot. I, I had yeah, to my exactly. Own. My my last when well, we didn't have acts on server at all, we we used tracking processors. We had to figure it all ourselves. We had our own database keeping track of everything, and it was a lot tougher. So, so yeah, 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 I can imagine. And and in the previous project, you were working your database that you were using at that time was Mongo, right? Yes, if I remember correctly. Yeah, or, yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. MongoDB. Gotcha, gotcha. So that was MongoDB. Yeah, good. Um, so that's that's fantastic. I know the uh, the UI really helps to see things without having to. Yeah. Going and figuring things out out of the code base and doing all of that, which, uh, which can be painful and time consuming too. Yeah, it's yeah. you just want to get to the point. You want to get the answers that you want um, in a matter of seconds or minute at the most, and just get on with everything else you need. Very good. So now you have been there for a couple of years. You have faced all of these challenges. Um, dare i say is everybody on board now uh yeah <laughs> or do um, you still have lot, <laughs> people lot, that you have to convince a lot more no more people want to work on it it's hard now nice. um so so uh 
like I said, we got to keep the lights on. So we, the teams yeah, get, you know, um, they, they got to work on keeping the old stuff going and we have people that want to work on the new stuff. And it's, yeah, that's now the challenge is, is, is get balancing out the resources and getting people right, to exactly. board. Um, yeah. you know, we just got a new, a new deadline, not deadline, but we were just one of our, one of the things in uplink uses, um, exchange and uses exchange, like old exchange and that server is going away. And it's for does mm. it use it for scheduling on calendars and putting things on people's calendars and stuff. And this morning it was just like, uh, yeah, that's going to have to go away soon. You guys need to get the scheduling <laughs> stuff off there and scheduling. Hey, events. Oh, this sounds like a nice little fit. That's you know, so right. So we're uh, um, as I was doing right before this podcast, I was starting to do some analysis of what's going to take to get us mm-hmm. off of there and and what the you know what's going to have to be. But but to me it was like. One of the things is a notice has to get sent when they schedule. This is for scheduling hearings for like appeals. So when it's right. hearing is scheduled, you usually have to send out a notice to, hey, hey, you have to come to a, a hearing. So that's like an event driven mm-hmm. thing right there. We have did the notice generation. Now I can have, they schedule a hearing. I kick off an event to send the notice. And I think yeah. it's going to be an easy sell. And so yeah, that's what, that's the next thing on the horizon that just came into our next step. <laughs> Awesome. Gives me more more material to talk to you. This is great. <laughs> Coming back in hopefully less than a year and talk about this new project, which is great. Really cool. Um, one last thing I wanted to ask you, Andy, because um, of all of the challenges that you have faced, and a lot of them had to deal with uh, people and mm-hmm. wanting to sort of adapt a new uh, way of thinking, a new way of doing yeah. things. How was the onboarding process like once you um, convinced them enough that, hey, let's at least give it a try? What did you do to onboard them? Um, mostly, I uh, we did pair programming, at least at first, mm, okay. um, to get them mm-hmm. to get them. So like I said, we did a lot of unit testing stuff, but um, mm-hmm. I, yeah, it's, it was... Uh, a lot of this was that I, I the most recent one with our nose generation i worked with one other developer uh and it was a lot easier with just one <laughs> and and yeah. um but but it was the same kind of thing it's just we did just pair programming we worked through the domain together mm-hmm. we did the event flow we did a lot of diagramming together so this is our event flow this is oh, our nice. command flow and then we just took we took one event and 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 we just pushed it through all the way to the end right we did the control mm-hmm. we did the we did the unit test to get the domain working right. And then we worked up to the controllers to get the command in and just moved through, um, um, I would call I, I, you know, the tracer bullet approach, you know, basically you fire a shot clear through the system and see where it goes, you know? And so, yeah, I, I don't like doing just one, oh, we're going to work out the whole domain and make it the whole domain work. I, I want to see it work mm-hmm. all the way through one event, get the projection working. And a lot of the argument comes, uh, this is something from the team is, well, if we do that, we mm-hmm. got to go back and rework it, right? Because what well, if this changes? Mm-hmm. Well, it's going yeah. to change. But but if you know from end to end, at least this one thing works, all your integration works, everything's working. Yeah. If you have to change it, you got to change it. Where it's software. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. You know, yeah. It's, what, it's just the way it is. It's, <laughs> it's the, code. <laughs> nothing big. It's just code. <laughs> so, so I mean, that, 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 I think that helped a lot is we, we, uh, um, we integrated all the way. We took one thing and we just drove it through from uplink with the integration point all the way to the other side, you know, and, mm-hmm. and we just, we just did that, you know, together, you know, one yeah. thing. And then it's kind of, okay, I'll go work on this. You go work on that. And we get back together and we, we compare things. So that's how, how I, like how I approach onboarding. Um, you nice. know, it's, it's, it is it works. <laughs> yeah. And it seems like it sort of starts, uh, starts at the design level. Yeah. So you kind of looked at high level, at least what you want to see, and then go into a little bit more fine grain and then onto the code. So there's quite yeah. a few things happening first before you, actually sit down and open oh, up your IDE and start yeah. coding. Oh, absolutely. Is- absolutely. I, I, it's harder because now I'm remote. It's harder to be able to go. I used to be able to go on a whiteboard and just whiteboard stuff yeah. and sticky notes and did that kind of stuff. And, and, and my whole project, and this one's a little bit harder. We, we argue. Yeah. I, I, I always, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm kind of colorblind according to my wife. Cause I can't match my clothes, but <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I do have I do great. have trouble I do have trouble seeing certain colors, and so people look yeah. at my diagrams and they're like, "Oh, that's ugly." And it's, I don't care what color you pick. Let's change the color. <laughs> change them. I don't it's care. But I, I I have a lot of arguments over colors on diagrams. For I should. That's <laughs> <So> interesting. <laughs> But it 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 helps. I'm willing to lose those battles and it helps build. Like, oh, Andy, you know, we're, we're, I mean, Andy's easy to work with. He, I'll go, I'll change all my diagrams around if you guys think it's hard to read. I'll change if it, it makes you happier. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Happier, Whatever makes you keep, happy. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. So, so yes. I mean, it is harder working remote. <laughs> that's important to be flexible. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it definitely is. But in in some ways. It, it kind of uh, eases things up a little bit too, right? Because you, you, as you mentioned, you know, the, the whole issue of colors. How many, if you're working on a whiteboard, how many markers do you want to get to, please, everybody, as opposed to, yeah. you know, if you're working on Miro, you just want to change the color, just go change the oh, damn I, thing. I, I, and I used it's to get fine. arguments over sticky notes. I had orange sticky notes and blue sticky notes and yellow sticky notes, and they wouldn't, people would, somebody would say, I don't want to use orange for this. Okay. <laughs> Let's use a different color. I don't use something care. else. You're missing the point. <laughs> As long as we're all using the same color for events, that's all that matters. As long as yeah. we're all using the same for commands, that's all that matters. Nobody all I cares. Care about. I, exactly. I don't care. Use rainbow. It's fine. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's really funny. Yeah, we always have this joke. Um, our our challenge a lot of time is naming stuff, or yeah, yeah. like in oh your case, it's coloring I, things. I, I forgot about that one. I, I used the word. I'm session. sorry. <laughs> I used the word session to me when the doc upload when that when the notice goes out. I started what I call this started doc upload session. That's that time that is a time session where someone they have well that session's live, they can upload. If it's two weeks, they go, Well, a session doesn't last two weeks. Well, a web session might not last two weeks, but this is a <laughs> upload session. I still kept the name because I know their name made sense to me, but but it caused so much confusion everywhere that you I know that word. ubiquitous <laughs> language is no joke. <laughs> So I, yeah. there's <laughs> there are layers of challenges in there. <laughs> Just yes. you feel one, another one presents itself. Yes. That's a good point. I I forgot about that. There were a lot of the challenges was yeah. was coming yeah. up with a consistent vocabulary. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just you know aside from joking, I think it's really important because if you. Um, I, I've had various conversations with a lot of people about just that. If your vocabulary doesn't match another mm -hmm. person in your team. Um, you're speaking two different languages, right? And you Absolutely. you have to first understand each other's languages to be able to communicate properly, to be able to move forward. Otherwise, you're yeah. you're saying something, and the other person is hearing something completely different, right? So Absolutely. Unless you know that you're okay. I'm using one of the things I used to uh, joke about was the the word client, for example, mm -hmm. my pre-IT days and years, if somebody came to me and said client, to me, it would be a customer, somebody right. who is interested in my services that I have to offer and what have you. Um, client means something extremely different in the world of software. So <laughs> if somebody comes to me and says client, and I'm saying client, we think we're saying the same word, but it actually means completely right. two, two very different meanings. So that always, um, yeah, so it's an important one, definitely. The, those you know small details make that huge of a difference once yeah. they're overlooked and if we spend the time to really kind of get to those nitty-gritty things and yeah. smooth them out and understand each other i think it, the, the process goes a lot more smoothly really great so thank you so much andy for your time and uh i'm glad that the project is going well now i'm glad we didn't have this conversation a year and a half ago <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it might have been a different conversation then. <laughs> still yes. a good one but i'm glad that things are going well and yeah i'm looking forward to hearing more about uh what are the next steps uh right. that you're you're going to take next year and so on so uh we'll come back and uh, revisit so thanks again you. and uh, right. good luck with everything thank you so much sarah yeah. take you. care right. of course Bye. have a good one Thank you for listening to my talk with Andy. I hope you enjoyed it. Please join me next time as I talk to other amazing guests with wonderful topics. Until then, have a great time and happy coding.